Hello and welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Miriam. I'm Corey Ballmeister. And we've got Rob in the booth. Say hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. Rob will be taking all of your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games so he can see them and send his favorites over to us. As always, we are brought to you by Star City Games and sponsored by many people now. Yeah, everyone. First one up. Carnox Chairs, they've been here for a while. Carnox.com yeah. slash SCG. They got your back. 10%. Use the affiliate link. You got the 10%. Yeah. It's pretty easy. Is there any other store I could get 10% at? There is, actually. Really? It's Coalesce Apparel. Oh. Go to coalesce.shop. Wait, is that the Roll Todd shirt? Coalesce, yes. Oh, yeah. That's coalesceapparel.shop, sorry. Yes. Uh, and if you use the uh, discount code SCG, you will get 10% off of your purchase there. Get yourself a Roll Todd shirt. Get yourself a Simic Combine shirt. They got some hoodies. Got a bunch of cool stuff. I've heard a lot of good That's things. That's this many percentages off. Yeah, it's like you get 20% off if you, if you use both, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you get 20% off both. That would Carnox be 40% chair. off. Yeah, then, then you get to eighty percent off. That gets out of hand really quick. The, we're getting to territory of math that I just can't fathom yes, here. So let's uh, let's keep it to ten, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> lastly, we are now sponsored by Ultimate Guard, uh, and that means we are using katana sleeves on stream. They're nice. They shuffle real nice. They shuffle amazingly. I have to say. I have to say. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. Yes, I'm a fan, and I like that we got red and yellow just to match the versus live side. Oh, no. we we do. We do our job well. Here. Yes, yes. And by we, I mean everyone them. else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who does all of these things we for us. We do it pretty mediumly, but everybody <laughs> else at SCG, primo. <laughs> okay. The two weeks of, you know, intense pioneer action yeah. are over. Yeah. Three player stores in the books, two team constructed opens in the books. And now we have a really good picture of what the Pioneer metagame is going to be going forward. Yep. So everything sort of leading up to this in December and January, it was all kind of illusory right like we knew what decks people were playing and were doing well but no one was really that confident that those were should be the best decks. exactly everyone kind of said like you know what i'm playing all these decks but they kind of all suck like <laughs> i don't i you know i mean that's what i heard from a lot of people when they started pioneer when they picked it all up because let's get real all the pros were playing you know a bunch of standard events um, and, you know, other Mythic Championships and stuff, there was no focus on Pioneer for them. Now, these last two weeks was the first time we got to see the pros actually try their try their hand at this format. And it started with, you know, everybody I was talking to, they're just like, none of these decks are that good. You know, like, we, we got to figure something else out. And I think we've really, you know, risen to the top, maybe like the fo top five decks, as well as some absolute home runs after these yeah. two weeks. So We, we do have to say that, Theros Beyond Death has had a, a huge impact, right? Yeah. I think all of the top decks are completely not viable without Theros Beyond Death cards. Yeah. Thassa's Oracle, Underworld Breach, Uro, Na Titan of Nature's Wrath. Yeah. All those three cards, all incredibly important to... I will decks. say, the Reed Dukes and Brad Nelsons of the world, we're going to play some Golgari garbage anyways. <laughs> Euro just made it viable. Yes. So. <laughs> the Gold Garbage Squad. The Gold Garbage Squad, right. yeah. Yes. We call it the Trinity of Jund. They're on my <laughs> it's Logan Nettles, Jabberwocky Online, Reed Duke, and Brad Nelson is the Trinity of Jun for them. Uh, so. yes. <laughs> and Sultai is a Jun deck. Let's go. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Jun doesn't just mean yeah. black, green, red. You know, you know, it could mean a whole different pile of things. It's a 100%. lifestyle. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's a state of mind. But one thing that also came from these uh, Pioneer Players Tours is the out, the the outbreak of combo. Combo in the form of Demir Inverter was kind of already the, the known strategy, but list got perfected. You know, you figured out good ways to pivot in matches that uh, were trying to really stop the combo with cards like Pack Rat um, that was taken down by the inevitable Players Tour Phoenix champion, Corey Burkhardt, I know, played three of them, which we're going to see a little bit later. But then the Lotus Breach deck was the talk of the town. This is what I would have played uh, if I made it to Phoenix. We were all yeah. on air when they saw me get the news <laughs> that I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> so I, uh, I did some chilling. I watched some coverage, you know, ate a whole pint of ice cream and cried into it all day. It was pretty, it was a pretty good what Saturday. Just, we can't call my, my bluff out here. <laughs> rocky Road. <laughs> you did have a rocky road. I did. Way, you were on the way to the airport. It was raining pretty hard. It really was. It really was. I, someone was just like, yeah, is uh, hopefully you don't run into some weather. And I'm like, yeah, they really interact with flying quite well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I agree. The, the Lotus Breach deck is... Now, the sort of breakout deck from yeah. Phoenix after Inverter was more the breakout deck in Nagoya and Brussels. And there's a lot of talk about this deck being too good. So yeah. we have decided to put it to the test. Yep. 
Corey, you know, you tested with this deck all, you know, all week leading up to Phoenix, didn't get to play it. Yep. So now this is your chance to shine right here. This is going to be your moment. <laughs> yeah. We're going to play the NCAA tournament song, One Shining Moment at the end. Yes. Uh, and, and, you know, as you're dancing around with the marbles. Hey, let's get real. I mean, a player's tour trophy is okay and whatnot, but those marbles, I got my eye on those. Yes. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but we will be pitting it against what I think are the next three best decks in the me in the metagame. And, and, and decks that I also think have good matchup against it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or at least like so. close, <laughs> you know. I don't, you know, honestly, I think maybe you're describing close as maybe the Sultai Delirium is maybe your kind of close thing. But Jacob Wilson was doing some damage to uh, these Lotus Breach decks all weekend. And now, granted, he is a phenomenal player, so he's definitely playing uh, and keeping the correct hands. But I really think all of them have game, and I don't think the deck is too insane yet. I do think it's good, but you know, I mean, we even saw Ben White's win Magic Fest in Phoenix with four dampening spheres. In in his red, uh, mono red Eldrazi deck. And, you know, I mean, that that's a deck that was prepared to be breached. Yeah. And you know he beat it many times. So but, uh, To me, like, the, these are the four decks that I would recommend somebody play. Yeah. Uh, I don't really want to recommend anything outside of these. So there's a yeah. good test of the breach deck. Showed up against the, the top decks in the metagame. I think we're going to see Pioneer narrow a little bit around these decks. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's just what the pl the pros do, right? Yeah. They, they fun wreck uh, into these and they really condense a yeah. format. None yeah. of this is it Phoenix mono green ramp. Yeah, nonsense. Get, just get that, get out, that of out of there. Yeah, that is that is one deck for sure. Mono green ramp. I played against it last night in this combo centric world. The the power of Ugin the Spirit Dragon as just your normal way to ramp up and win the game. I ain't cutting it anymore. Yeah, you got to play it in the sideboard. Turn th turn three misses <laughs> pilgrimage. Okay, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, that is over. That literally happened last night yeah. when I was streaming. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's good times. Know, let, let's see how this deck does. Let's do it. I won last week, so you get to be on the play. You did. You did. You uh, won our final team battle to win the best yes. two out of three. I'm going to be starting with Bant Spirits. Okay. Okay. Um, and this is the list from Phoenix uh, last weekend. Yes. Um, it's one of the Jesus. top eight competitors. Ooh, it's, it's somebody I know. Tommy Ashton. Yep. Yep. Tommy exactly. Ashton. Yep. Tommy real, Ashton. Real quick well before we start. Yes. Uh, Harlan Fear has a question, Corey, and he wants to know how is the weather down there? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> yes. Nice. Wow. Nice. Enjoy your time. Enjoy your time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to be at least two weeks, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I got an IQ. I don't know how far ahead he is ahead of uh, me, but. <laughs> enough. <laughs> enough. Yeah. W winning two trophies and four events will do that. That's true. Yeah. Leave the memeing to uh, me and Edgar, though, Harlan. Yes. Okay. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Sorry. We'll leave you the counting every time you get a trophy in your trophy pictures, but leave the memeing to us. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep. You good? I am not. You're uh, not. Okay. The important thing from this side of the matchup is I get on the battlefield early and start clocking Corey and then have my disruption up on turns three and four. Are you this, saying your hand doesn't do that? This hand has no disruption and has no spells that cost less than three. So it checks zero boxes. Snap it. <laughs> it was a nice old three lander. So okay. I had a good mix of lands and spells, but a completely unplayable hand in this match. Okay, fair enough. Well, while he shovels up, Rob, you got any questions or more burns from Harlan? We'll take it. <laughs> not take from Harlan. Yeah. Corey and not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but how big of a place do you feel Pioneer uh, combos uh, should have in the metagame? I think having a combo deck in the metagame is a very healthy thing, um, but it's 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 a very, very fine line that you have to tread. You know, I mean, if a combo deck gets to KCI status, that deck was bad for multiple reasons. The play pattern, watching that, everything like that was terrible. But when combo decks get to be too good, they warp the format because then they can evolve to be combo control decks. And combo control, I think, is one of the most devastatingly powerful decks in Magic's history. So I, I think they're reasonable. And I don't think the Demir Inverter deck is too good by any means. The Lotus Breach, we're, we're towing the line with that one. Yeah, but, no, uh, I, I agree. Everybody's talking about Dig Through Time, which seems weird to me. You know, if anything gets targeted, it's probably... But the it was in deck. all the combo decks. <laughs> yeah. There's only a one of in all the Lotus Breach decks. Maybe two, but... So, yeah. uh, I'm I'm with you there. Yeah. Um, ugh. But yeah, Lotus Breach is one worth looking at. But I think it is very important for everybody out there who has been, you know, wronged by 2019 Magic to just try to beat decks. You know, there is there is a lot of tools in Pioneer. You can beat decks. Play some Dampening Spheres. It's an artifact. Play four of them. You know, I mean, like, it's completely reasonable to play a heavy hate card like that um, instead of just demanding a ban right away. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is not a great six, but I think it's a keeper because we have some potential. If okay. our draws line up, I'm going to put this one back since it's not the card we're going to play on curve. Okay. And one thing from the from uh, Lotus Breach side, I, I'm going to be kind of explaining everything for anybody who has never played this deck because it is very comp very complicated. Um, so one thing as far as keeping, never keep a hand unless you're already on the mole train that uh, can't get a Lotus field in some regard. You just don't win with that. Otherwise, we're just a bad team or control deck, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Tump <laughs> Garden. Yes. All right. So another botan and botanical sanctum is so messed up in this deck. Being able to sack lands and then go back to one, two, and three. All right, scrying for the lotus field and then pass to you. Uh, island pass. Okay. I already don't feel good about this game. Why not? Just don't, just don't like it when your sylvan scrying's resolved. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, they don't resolve uh, too often in this matchup. All right, anything we want to do here? Let's see. You do have only access to two mana. It's not too bad for me to uh, attempt to do a play here. We're going to float two blue. We're going to represent this for mana. Uh, Lotus Field. I'm going to cycle Vizier on top. Draw. Um, cycle Vizier, float another mana. So we got one balloon pool. Yep. Um, and then granted. That's pretty good. Not bad, huh? So this is going to go on an adventure. We're going to take a peek. Let's see what we want here. I definitely don't need artifact disruption. I don't really want a wrath. Um, we could go big. Try to get an Ugin. Um, it's usually quite good. Let's see. Other considerations, we don't really want too much else. Yeah, we're gonna go big here and get Eugene. Okay. All right, and then pass to you. I will rattle chains in here. Okay. Shock to 18 okay. and attack for two. 18 all. Pass the turn. Okay, we're gonna untap. So Ugin in Corey's hand, or him getting Ugin off the granted, suggests he has way, is, is more ways to generate mana. Could be setting up even a second Lotus Field or stage to copy with hidden strings. You never truly know. We're going to go with the Thespian stage. Yep. I'm going to go with three green, cast a Grazer. Yep. We're going to put Breeding Pool into play tap, and then Thespian stage copying Lotus Field. Got a little handy piece of paper here. Um, we'll go like that. So now we're up to seven mana here on what, turn three? Not bad, huh? That's yeah, pretty good. Not bad. Uh, on your end step, I'll play an eagle. Okay. Eagle! Okay, fortress, attack for five. All right, I will block here. Take or wait, I want to block yeah, here. I want to keep three. mine alive. Yep. 15. 15. Pass the turn. All right. Now, what do we want to do? Um... Got plenty of stuff here. Let's start with a three green. Down to one green. Seder Wayfinder. That's fine. Yeah, that's not too big of a deal usually for you. All right. Put these in the yard. Get this. Um. Okay. Now, what do we want to do here? I don't think we can really try and win. When you have four mana available, that gets to be a little tricky. Can try, I guess. Or you can be a coward. I could be a coward. I could be a coward. That is an option. All right. So, a lot of lines are complicated here. So, if we take a little time, you understand why. Let's go with three red. Thank you. It's going to be an Underworld Breach. Yeah, let's go with Underworld Breach. Okay, so currently only have three mana floating. You have not played a land this turn. I have not. Nope. And you know I have a coast. From the Seder. Yeah. Yep. So you have four in hand right now? I have four. Yep. Four. So coast, Ugin, two others. Yep. Um, if you get to, you can actually just hit the strings. Twice or hidden strings, you can hidden strings pour 
And then strings again. Yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna separate it with relevant cards and non. Uh, these don't really matter. These are relevant things. It was a good Seder Wayfinder essentially just because I got a land drop and uh, got the goods. So you have three strings, nets four, poor nets one. So that gets you to eight to Ugin if you resolve all of those cards. Um, but you're going to Ugin me next turn anyway. So I guess you're just using the breach to cast poor. Um, what do I want to do? It's like, tough. These matches are always tough. Yeah, playing around the Ugin is hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, spell qualering something like this and then Ugin getting dropped. I mean, it's kind of awkward, right? Because this will just kind of die if I would get it back, but. Yeah. The issue is that if you just draw into like another strings, you could like Ugin plus Fae of Wishes, which gets really tough. Yep. Um, but I do think I just let this resolve because I think everything's building towards Ugin. Okay. All right, so Breach is in play. We are going to play a land. I'm going to add blue and use this green um, to Hidden Strings. Now, uh, I'm escaping it with this, so exiling three cards. We'll put this above our... We'll put this over here. This will be our exiled. All right, um, hidden strings target the two lotus fields. Yep. Okay, so that's untapped. Um, now, poor, I think, is the pretty likely thing to be doing now. <clears throat> um, so now we're up to six blue. Yeah, I'm going to think here real quick. We're definitely going to add six blue. Um, all right, we're going to go with granted down to three blue, no red. Oof. Um, that's tough. <laughs> now, if I let this granted resolve... Corey can find like a counter spell, yep. which would be good, or a supreme verdict, both of which are really, really good. Yep. But if I try to counter it and miss on Queller, you're gonna get to Ugin my battlefield away. Yep. Because you can instead of pouring, you can just hidden strings. Yep. And you have four here, hidden strings, and that's four. That gets you exactly to eight. So, but if I just let you verdict me, then I have to recover from verdict and Ugin. Um, yeah, this is just one of those cases where he's at Corey's attacking from so many angles. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to stop them all. Yeah, it really is tough. Even if I even if I quell this, like you're gonna get to Ugin me next turn. Yeah, it is. Uh, you're in a rough spot. I th I think I have to let this resolve too. Okay. I'm going to go get Tome Scour. This is the other combo piece. I'm essentially just trying to uh, lock it up here. Okay, so he's just forcing me to have the Queller. Yep. But if you commit another mana, then you can't Ugin immediately. Yep. So I at least get an attack in. All right, so then we're going to go down to one mana, and I'm going to Hidden Strings, escaping these three, and... targeting these two. This, I am going to try to company in response. Okay. I can either hit Wanderer plus X or Queller here. And I hit neither of them, so I am very dead. <laughs> I had it anyways <laughs> to play around the Queller. So I'm going to, with this on the stack, I'm going to Expansion. Um, so now I have two hidden strings on the stack. They're both targeting this. This resolves first. Untap six. Float six. Um, I will not cipher. Um, then untap. So now I have six floating. Um, and now I'll go to five. I'll tome scour myself. One, two, three, four, five. Exile three. 
Tom Scar myself, and now we have a we we have the win, um, but I'm gonna go through it to get this known for everybody. Down to three, Tom Scar yourself, and we're just decking ourselves essentially. XL three, Tom Scar myself. Yeah, four five. Uh, XL three, Tom Scar myself. Two three, four five. And now we even have a dispute. You know, I mean, he's tapped out, so it doesn't truly matter. Um, yeah, you only have 17 cards in your library, so you can actually just keep Tome Scouring and... Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll do it this way. Okay, so now float six, uh, hidden strings, these two lands. Exile this. Thank you. So now we have four floating. Tome Scour. We will... And the things that you always want to get rid of are like the Grazers, Underworld, Breach, Vizier. Um, the things you're not going to Spells, gonna cast. essentially. Yeah, exactly. The things you'll never flash back. You never bring the lands back. But like leaving a Fey in the sideboard is, or in the graveyard is great. All right, so Tome Scour again. All right, so now we have two cards in library, so that is perfect. And now at this point, um, we have two mana. We you can you go. have eight total. That's perfect. Yeah, we have eight total. So now we just granted. Exiling three, down to four mana. Granted, and yes, you can grant it from the graveyard, which is kind of messed up. Jace, uh, uptick five, mill two, draw, game. <laughs> so the Ugin was kind of just a distraction, but it, it, it made you play in a different way. But yeah. I mean, I, I just had an extra fey. So my whole plan was to just... Um, have a good plan B if the combo didn't work, but yeah, if that underworld breach resolved, it was just game, you know? Um, so I think you had to go for it, but yeah, I, I don't, and then I just do get you. So you're right. You were in just a, a rough spot there, you know? Yeah. And I, I missed regardless. So there's no way I'm, I'm coming close to winning. Exactly. But I, exactly. I took a line that lost. If you had the expansion in your hand by yep. waiting, mm -hmm. um, but even if I hit the Queller there, like it, it's going to be rough, rough yep. sledding for me. Okay, well, that is going to be it for game one here with uh, Teamer Lotus Breach combo against Band Spirits. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to bring you some sideboarding. I don't do too much because I'm a granted <laughs> deck, but... Uh, I'll do some. We'll have uh, Ross doing some things. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Versus Live, where we are sideboarding in our match <laughs> between Band Spirits and Lotus Breach. Uh, on my side, pretty easy to understand what we're bringing in, bringing in all our counter spells, a nice. couple remorseful clerics. You know, you can't really rely on the cleric, but sometimes it'll buy you a turn against breach. Uh, and the fact that it comes on a reasonable size body, yep. you know, makes it worthwhile. Um, we are cutting Nebel Gas Herald. There just aren't many creatures for us to tap. Uh, we can usually just sort of attack through uh, the 03s and 14s when we get <laughs> enough lords. I am trimming one lord. Uh, I just need to be more disruptive in this matchup, and I want to lower my curve as much as possible, so I'm cutting threes wherever I can. I'm trimming on Spectral Sailor. Yeah, you never really have time with that card. Yeah, you don't have time to activate it, and the the one one actually does have trouble attacking through the 03s and 14s. It does, it so. does, yep. And then I'm trimming one Selfless Spirit. You do have a good number of sweepers, but this list had four spirits in the main, so I think you can trim one. We're bringing in other two drops. Yeah, um, and it's a it's a the, the other thing is these two are sorcery speed cards. That spirit is really being selfless by taking the hit and sideboarding yeah. out there. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you really want to avoid committing mana on your own turn. Yeah, both exactly. against sweepers and against, you know, having to counter your combo uh, um, elements. All right. And from the teamer mill deck over here, we are taking out what? teamer. What now? Teamer teamer mill. It's that's yeah. your it, it's a teamer mill deck. I milled myself. I'm teamer colors. Is there a better? Yeah, never mind. Anyways, so I'm going to be taking out two Seder Wayfinders. The big key to taking this card out is if the body doesn't block, take it out. Okay, that is that is 100% the plan with this card. It's your worst enabler in the decks. Uh, strategic planning is a lot better, but it's basically your fifth and sixth uh, Sylvan Scrying when uh, when you can't find Lotus Breach in a pinch. Helps you a little bit against some of the aggressive decks, but not this one. Exactly. And there's another rule with Expansion Explosion. If you're not going to exile my Fae of Wishes, take it out. You know, you just almost never want this card um, if they don't have slaughter games if they don't have unmoored ego this is the the secondary win condition if they take your phase you're able to just uh, cast underworld breach pour over the pages 
till you draw till you essentially see every card and you'll eventually see all the hidden strength all the viziers and you build up your graveyard as much as you can you need two lotus fields for this and then eventually you float enough mana where you just explosion for six um or i mean explosion for 20 and win the game through that yeah, six is probably not enough. It's probably not enough, yeah. Cards we're bringing in here. Mystical Dispute is amazing. If I had more, I'd bring in more, and I definitely might think about more. Uh, with Bant Spirits, I think, going to be quite popular as one of the good matchups for this deck, you know? And then uh, cards we're bringing in here, you can think about Natural State or Unravel the Aether, but Rest in Peace is not that popular. People are leaning on the Rest in Peace with legs here, essentially. So I like just bringing in uh, Mass Removal. Sometimes I can get you off guard, but honestly, they're not great. They're really, they're really not that great here. It's just... You know, you you don't want too much here. Um, naturally, drawing these sometimes are great. Um, but the sideboard, you have to keep pretty much in whole. So I want to take this opportunity to explain the sideboard a little bit. These three, you never touch them. You need these to combo. You need these to search up uh, from your granted. So never bring these in, um, really, under any circumstance. You can bring in Ugin sometimes. Uh, you bring in Thought Distortion sometimes. Even though they're silver bullets, don't be afraid to bring them in. Um, but you need these to combo. And then, like, I'm leaving one of each to give myself the option if I granted, because sometimes I need an uncounterable threat, or sometimes I need to do it that turn for three mana. And then the rest of these are silver bullets. Um, you know, these definitely against any black deck, or just most of the time. If you suspect Dampening Sphere, you usually want to bring in an, a few, but Spirits usually um, just plays the creatures, but that could change now, and maybe moving forward I should bring in more... Um, yeah. Naturalize effects. It's just something where you're going to need to monitor the meta game, know what people have against you. Exactly. That, that's typical of combo decks. When you're playing yeah. a deck like this where people do have hate cards potentially, you need to know when it's common to see them, when it's not common to see them, exactly. and be able to sideboard appropriately. Even and expect if you the unexpected. And expect the unexpected. You know, I mean, the one joy about this is the post board games are wild with this deck because, I mean, you win in some obscure ways. You you really need to think outside the box to, uh, to get it done because there's so many games where you get two hate pieces and you're not going to win the traditional way you got to first set up a wrath then bring back Faye, then to set up a new you know i mean just random things like that that you don't really know what you're doing until you play a lot of decks with or a lot of reps with it um and get these weird obscure scenarios in person yeah the deck yeah. is so versatile you can be a ramp deck you can be a control deck you yep. can be a combo deck mill deck <laughs> team or mill <laughs> i'm a team i was a team or mill deck last game let's see what we are this game but before we get started, what do you think about taking some questions? I think that's a good idea. I like it. Let's take some questions, Rob. You got a few? Yeah. First one from Hysteus. Uh, How do you feel about mono black aggro and its possibility to attack these combo decks in Pioneer, given that it can put a clock and play cards like Thoughtseize? <laughs> well, I think uh, it comes down to plain and simple. When Thoughtseize is a good card against the combo decks, it's a good matchup. But... Thoughtseize isn't good against these Breach decks. You know, I mean, it's a one-card combo most of the time. You either draw Breach, you draw Fey. So when, when my opponent just goes Thoughtseize, 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 I'm like, yeah, you're not, you're not killing me, so I have time. But against Inverter and stuff, you're able to actually pick apart their hand, stop their key combo pieces at a, at a key turn. Um, but I don't know. I, I still think Mono Black is fine. I, I'm not high on Mono Black. Like you said, Thoughtseize is surprisingly ineffective against Lotus Breach. Yeah. Um, and uh, the deck is just, everybody knows what it's doing. And it's, the primary advantage it had is this really strong late game in attrition matchups. But every other deck that is going long has some way to not play an attrition game and instead just trump you and go over the top. Yeah. You know, they're either finishing you, they're this deck that like ugins you or kills you with a combo. Yeah. They're inverter that has a combo that ends the game while you're activating Castle Lockthwain. Or they Band are... Band Spirits where you're top decking company where like it doesn't matter if you one for one them for so long. You just get a... You just get two spells on one card and the game's over. You know? Yeah. I mean, that that's probably one of your better matchups yeah. too, from mono, the mono black side. And yeah. then the Sultai Delirium deck, they're just building towards an Emrakul. Mm. And like Emrakul is going to undo four or five extra cards. <laughs> yeah. If you draw. Yeah. No, you said that. I, I didn't really think about that, but that's a great point. Everything is just going so huge in Pioneer that these small ball creature decks just aren't able to keep up. Niv Mizzet got thrown out of the metagame, um, which was a good matchup for these. Uh, 
um, small aggro creature decks, yeah. small aggro decks. Um, but combo, they just can't beat it. You know, I mean, they were main decking Unmoored Ego to try to beat it, and then still losing, they're like, okay, I can't play this deck. You know, yeah, like, like yeah. You, you both like have to race, but the combo decks are so lean that they're able to play good disruption. Like you, you get out of the sideboard with granted, but the inverter deck, because it only has to play eight combo pieces, gets to play a bunch of removal and gets a sideboard and good removal. Cry yeah. the Canarium, Kalidus, Trader of Get, uh, you know, Languish, Legion's End, all these good spells that other deck, other fair decks have been sideboarding against Mono Black for months. Yep. They get to do the same thing while still having the combo in their deck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, exactly. So it, it'll be interesting to see where the metagame progresses for Indy. I, I highly suspect it to not look the same. Um, you know, I mean, who knows? You know, dig through time, something like that could be banned, but I don't think it needs to yet. And uh, I was actually listening to this kind of off basis. I was listening to Melissa Del Toro's stream yesterday, and she's just like, we're, we're not banning cards after one tournament. Yeah. Which is smart. It's super smart. But I mean, I think that means we got this to stay. So you better think about hate cards and stuff like that um, if you want to move forward. And one last thing before we get started Bant Spirits is a deck that is like pretty good against this. But I played Mono Red last night, just Ben White's Mono Red Eldrazi thing. I played that four out of my five matches in the league and just destroyed that deck. Just picked you it apart. Spirits with Mono Red? Yeah, four times in a row. I mean, it, I was, shouldn't say destroyed. And to be fair, there was a turn where I went fry my opponent's spell queller that had a rampaging Ferocidon underneath it, and I had a Soul Scar Mage out, in, and my opponent just sacked Selfless Spirit. I'm like, okay. And then a die, you know, yeah. so needless to say, I, I got some free wins, but let's yeah. take one more question before we get started there, Rob. Sure. Going to your point about hate against this Lotus Breach deck, do you think cards like Eidolon of Rhetoric, uh, the rule of law effects are, are effective and something people should be looking at? I think it's reasonable, but, um, you know, I, I think Dampening Sphere is kind of that rule of law thing already that doesn't die to the sweepers is my concern. Yeah. Um, if you mix it with a fast clock, that's the recipe for success. It doesn't really matter your hate card, but you need it's to. It's definitely a reasonable card, especially yeah. in, in a deck, say, like the the Heliod Company deck that wants pips of devotion and different creatures out. Yeah. Uh, you know, Eidolon of Rhetoric could be good there uh, because it meshes with your game plan better, but it still just doesn't stop their ramp plan. Like, you yeah. you, you cast a very early fave wishes at Ugin, and we're ready to Ugin me two turns later. And that just deals with the hate, and then you can set up the breach after that. Yeah. So all, there's a lot of hate cards that stop the breach half of things, but you can't focus too much on that half and ignore the fact that they can just play this control game or this ramp into Ugin game, and mm -hmm. then either just dominate the game with Ugin, and literally it'll just win the game by itself. Yeah. Or if they you find a way to deal with Ugin, at least it removed all of those hateful permanents from the battlefield, and yep. now what you know you're powerless to stop the the breach game. So. Yeah. The clock is really important to deny them time to find all of those pieces and put all their answers together. Yeah. Uh, and so all of these cards like need to be combined with a good clock and you need to figure out like which one really works best in your deck to not detract from your ability to pressure them. Yep. Yeah. And the one thing that I think is scary from the breach side is picture your Lotus breach opponent, somebody at FNM that sits down and they're having fun. You can switch your decks in between. They got four decks, okay? They got a mill deck. They got a Ugin ramp deck. They got a control deck. And they just think like, oh, what, what, what is my opponent going to do this game? My Ugin ramp deck is good <laughs> against you. You just got all those in one deck. You just get to pick which kind of deck you want based on the kind of hate. Yeah. That maybe is exaggerating a bit. Don't, don't switch out your deck. At a tournament, that's <laughs> that's not called for, but <laughs> well, you basically get to do it. It yeah. really is impressive in its versatility. Agreed, agreed. Okay, what do you think? What's not impressive is my opening hand. Okay, of course. Only has yep. a planes for mana. Okay, um, I think this hand can be kind of scary on the draw, um, because it's pretty obvious that we need some things to go right. But you're not mulliganing this hand, definitely not. Some confidence there. You think things are going to go right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot. I'm playing against Ross. All of this is going to work. <laughs> I'm going to cast this. It's going to be resolving. I'm going to cast this. It's going to be resolving. <laughs> I'm going to cast Solve on turn two, then miss my third land, Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Do you got one more question, Rob? Yeah. Uh, so if, an op if you expect an opponent to board an unmoored ego, do you give any thought to boarding out a lotus field to find with a granted if they unmoored ego you on turn three and you don't have a lotus field? Um, you know, I, I haven't really thought about that, but that is another layer of complexity because, but the problem is, is if you just like 
go turn one grazer two lands and then turn two just play a lotus field you know their plan isn't good plus you're probably going to bring in dispute against those i don't think it's worth it but you could you definitely could i haven't yet but yeah, I definitely think you could. Yeah. yeah, does not sound outlandish to me. Yeah, agreed. Uh, this hand is solid. We have some of our disruptive elements and a good curve. Lucky. So I will keep that curve intact Kay. by putting that card on the bottom. I'll go to 18 and play Mausoleum Wanderer. Okay. One that of card's our, annoying. Yes. Our mm -hmm. best turn one play here, countering those early Sylvan Scryings, maybe even a strategic planning. All right. So I drew. Now we'll go with a thicket and pass to you. Um, remorseful cleric attack for two. Okay, eighteen. Pass the turn. We're gonna untap. Also, um, if you are playing ego against the breach deck, what do you feel are the best names? You know, I think Faye is a good name because it makes you expansion explosion. I think maybe there's even some world to naming hidden strings. Then you still just win with pour over the pages. So I just don't, it's whatever you name. If you name Lotus Breach, you go get the Lotus Breach. It's whatever you name, there's another, you just pivot from the Lotus Breach deck. So that's that's the thing is I don't think these Unmoored Ego effects are good. I think if you get Breach before that's in play, that's probably the best. Um, but, so you're shocking to 16 here? Yep. I'm going to shock to 16, and I'm going to start with a strategic planning. Um, I'm going to let this resolve. It's okay. Usually you don't counter planning. It's not super threatening, and you really do value your clock in this matchup. Yep. Yeah. Look, I also have Remorseful Clerics. If you know you stock your graveyard with good things, Go. you can exile it that way. Yep. And we had a very obvious hit here. Uh, that was something we really needed from our hand. Okay. I'm going to play a Supreme Phantom and get in for six. Okay. I will go to 10. Pass the turn. And I mean, the clock is uh, quite real already. That is for sure. Um, this is usually going to be the breach turn or the field turn. Yeah, but you got a nice little battlefield here. Um, yeah, you got a lot of hate. This is going to be a little tough. Um... Curving out on the play, always nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, what do we want to do? I think we have to go and play Seven Scrying. Um, so if I sack the Wanderer to counter this, I have four damage. Um, so I think no matter what, Ross can't kill me next turn, but very likely to have a two-turn clock. So I have to try to set it up. So I just have to jam. Not much I can do. Yeah, even even a Lord wouldn't be lethal here. It would be, yep. oh no, Lord would be exactly 10. No, because this is, yeah, this would be two. a four, this would be a four, this would be two. Oh, wow. So Lord is exactly 10. I don't have it. Otherwise, I would <laughs> be snap letting the Sylvan Scrying. <laughs> really, the only thing right now that worries me is you having Anger of the Gods plus Mystical Dispute next turn, and the only way I play into that is by countering the Sylvan Scrying, so I'm going to let this resolve. Okay. All right, so we're going to get a Thespian Stage, and then we're going to play Lotus Field, Sacred Two Lands. Okay. Hope we don't die. Lord. Okay, that's still a fine draw. Uh, I will attack four, seven. I will have no blocks. Three, four, five, six, or no, three, four, five, six, sorry. Oh, down to four. Four. And pass the turn. All right. Let's see what we can do. I think we're pretty dead here, but let's find out. Um, all right. Step one is going to be three blue. Cycle. Yep. Untap this. Um. <clears throat> Okay. That wander is just so annoying. So very annoying. Yeah. The, the, in this matchup, I think even more than any other, the difference between turn one wanderer and not is is huge. Gigantic. Yep. You know, it, it's it's nice in every matchup. Good against inverter. You like you can counter their thoughtsies to protect your more important cards or. You know, you sort of force Fatal Push to go with it instead of something else. Yep. Um, okay, so 
But here, like, the pressure is so important, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it's still going to be relevant on turn four or five. All right. We're going to go with blue, blue, blue. So I have five mana here. Four blue Nicolas. Yep. It's going to be a pour of the pages. No, that would just kill you. Hidden strings. Uh, so three blue left. Yep. Uh, the thing that worries me here is if Corey has another hidden strings. If I counter this one and you have another one, you go down to one blue, and now you could uh, you could verdict me. You could ang you could anger me with enough mana to pay for wanderer. Anger you. Um, I still haven't played a land. I believe, right? Uh, Maybe I have. Yeah, you played the stage. You, yep. You found I was the stage. on the draw. This yeah. was four lands. So, yeah. yep. And you didn't miss a land drop. Correct. Okay. Yeah, you played your land drop. You have six cards in hand, something like uh, that. Something like that. I am pretty full gripped. Yep. Six, yeah. Um, if I let this resolve, it gets you up to seven mana, which is enough to pour through the Wanderer. No, it's pour through the pages. <laughs> But there's nothing else that's really scary. I'm not scared about granted if this resolves. I guess if look, if I'm assuming I'm playing around another hidden strings, you really have access to nine mana. Um which is a very convenient amount. Nice. Um Oh, man, this is hard. Yep, it's always Very tricky hard. playing against this deck. I do not know what I should do. Wait. I don't have to worry. Why am I sitting here worried about another hidden streaks? I'm mostly wonder. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm sure chat's going nuts at me. I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's, let's just call this. We have Dispute. Um, which you obviously... Oh, yeah, well, this is on the stack. Yep. So... And this is fine. You still get up to six mana. You can't grant. You need to have another hidden stirrings and granted or poor. Um, and like, if you have double stirrings, mythical to you and the granted or poor, there wasn't that. That was just everything. Yep. So yeah, quality countered. Hidden strings is good. Okay, on top. <sighs> and you had the vizier to start it all. Yep. Um. Okay. See what we can do here. Um, so three, I think I needed you to have absolutely nothing. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, so we're gonna add red. Go down to one red, Underworld Breach. Resolves. Okay. Hidden strings. With just the red floating? Uh, oh. I tap this and this, so. I have two floating. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, you, you had three and then you disputed down yep. two when I couldn't counter the dispute. So I'll escape these. Um, yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. Okay. And tap. Float four. So up to four blue, red, colorless. Yep. Thank you. Um, red, colorless. Guess we only need one hidden string, so we'll go like this. Hidden strings. So down to three blue zero colors. Yep. Still fine. Okay. Um, three blue up to six. Uh, still can't activate this. I really want to find a spot where I can activate with Lotus Field here, but I just don't have it yet. Yeah. Looks like you needed one more card in your graveyard. Yeah, <laughs> if, you got to, if you got to strings one more time, I think you'd be good. Yeah, okay. Um, we're going to go down to... Oh, I just completely forgot about this Remorseful Cleric. Yeah, that... that... Well, I'm stupid. 
I'm gonna go down to two, one colorless, so three floating. Pour over the pages. So, so I have two blue floating, one colorless. Pour over the pages on the stack. So this is gonna get you up to seven mana. Yep. Um, trying to dance around the hate. So now do I just, uh, I'm just thinking if I want to cleric now. Oh, I was, th I was gonna I say, are you, thinking about, are, you, are you thinking about disputing? Cause that's not great for me. Yeah. <laughs> if I had a dispute, this game would have ended long ago. <laughs> yeah, and if yeah. I wasn't so distracted looking at your side and remembered I'd remorse the cleric, this game would probably have been over as well. Yep, maybe. Um, I had, a, I had a little bit of a plan B if you sacked it in response to this, but I don't know if it would have worked. Sure. That's, a, that's a lot of uncertainty when you start going for it yeah. in this deck. Um, I do think I don't want to let you strings again. Okay. Like if, you, if you just pour, you discard a card, you're not going to get any, any other value out of this. You'll just be left with what's in your hand. I guess you cast spells from your hand and then from your graveyard. But you're going to need to find more on tap effects, and you've already used a good number of them. You've yeah. used half. Yeah, I'm, I'll just... Uh, exile? Exile your grave. Okay, so does this resolve? Yep. All right, so I'm going to untap this. Draw three. Discard. Um, discard this. Um, okay, so now I just have to worry about counter unless I pay two. Um... So I think I'm gonna need to find a hidden strings here at some point. All right, so three, four, five, six, seven. I can play a land. No, I already played a land. Yep. Okay, um, so add four plus this. So leave that. There's four plus this port. Yep. Draw three, discard one. And I'm at four? Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll discard this. Now, four, we're gonna go down to one mana. Um, and pour over the pages. And this I'll be forced to counter, so. Yep. Um, you successfully dealt with both of my creatures, so now you're not dead next turn, yep. and drawn a bunch of cards. And that was the whole plan, is just make sure I don't die, um, and then I'll say go, pass to you, and hope you don't have, I'm at four, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Attack for one. Okay. Three. Three. Pass the turn. 18. Untap. Now let's just see if I can maybe stay alive. Um. Too bad you don't have psionic blast, Ross. <laughs> I love that card. Psionic Blast? Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice one. How many cards you got? Two. Two, huh? I only have four mana, possibility of five. I think we'll start with this. And we'll go with a port. I will disdainful start that. Okay. Um, pass to you. No flash spirit, we might get to live again. Indeed you will. Yay. Uh, attack for one. Two. Yes. All right. All right. Well, I think we are going to have to hope that all right, we're gonna start with three blue. Thank you. We're gonna go with a strategic planning down to one. Sure. Okay. Um, get this card, put these into the graveyard, and isn't great. Might be running on our last leg here. So use that one fave wishes. 
dispute. I only have one attacker. Okay. Faye's going to break that one. <laughs> this and pass uh, to you. We need a lord to end this game. No Otherwise, lord. You're handless. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Attack for one. One. That's the turn. All right. So now we have to go. There's no decision. So we're going to start by tapping for three blue. We're going to net a blue by cycling this. Um, untapping this. Um... Let's see. No, still missing some key parts of our hand here, but we have to just go for it. Red. Uh, go down to one red. Underworld Breach. Yep. Okay. Um, now we need to play our land for the turn. Five mana. Pour over thy pages. Yep. Okay. So we're going to untap these two. Draw three. I think you really just need us hidden strings. Yeah, exactly. That's what I need. Um, discard this. But I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess I could just cast Fay of Wishes to try to defend at some point. Um, yeah, that's not a horrible play. If you have a counter spell here, I just lose, but I think you would have countered already. Um, so I'm debating whether or not to play the stuff from my hand or just go for another pour over the pages here. And I think it's just go for another pour. Yep. Okay. That's good. All right, one, two, three. We're going to untap this and might actually untap this. I don't think we're going to activate Thespian. Draw three. Discard Sylvan Scrying. Three blue. Uh, down to one. Down the strings. Cycle. Nope. Nope, <laughs> nope not quite. On but that does help. Um, so I can pour again. Yep. So we'll pour. I'll leave this Fey as a plan B just in case I just have to cast it. Untap. One, two, three. Jesus. Um, get rid of Sylvan Scrying. Um, okay. So only four mana available, so I'm out of pouring over the pages. I guess I just go for... I think I have to start with three blue, go down to one blue, go with a strategic planning. One, two, three, didn't get there. Um, and now it's play Fey or just play the card in my hand. I think the card in my hand is just better here. All right, um, Grazer. Yep. So one blue floating. I'll put a thespian stage in. And that's all I got. Sacrifice this. Dang it. <laughs> so close. But yeah, we needed the hidden strings. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I had the dispute. Nah, dispute wouldn't have done anything. Nah, yeah, I had five mana. Obviously. Oh, yeah, classic. <laughs> Never look. Never look. Yep. Okay. Yep. So a significant misstep on my part where I was just focusing on Corey's stuff, trying to figure out exactly what was going on with his hand and yeah. just not looking at my own battlefield. I think that game would have been a little bit easier um, yep. because I, I, I still think you would have forced me to sack the Wanderer that turn and bought the, the extra couple turns, but you wouldn't have been able to do as much. I you, think if you sack the Wanderer in response to my breach there, I think I die on the spot. The cleric, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, uh, you don't die on the spot because I only have three power at that point. So you're going to get at least another. Oh, turn. yeah, that's true. Yeah. I died to a spirit, but, you yeah, know. Which I didn't sense. have, but yeah. I had two counter spells that turn. I had dispute plus stroke. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, just, you know, I'm trying to get in Corey's head because I, that deck is quite complicated and it's good to try to figure out what they're doing, but yeah, got to keep track of your own stuff. It's a tough deck. It is a tough deck to play and play against. So, I mean, like, you know, I mean, that's probably the good joy of this first player's tour. Uh, where not, a, I mean, people have play, seen the breach deck, but this is a, a more sophisticated piece of technology than it was with like omniscience and trying to go crazy with that kind of stuff. Um, 
So I bet people got a lot of free wins. Uh, people just trying to figure out what the deck does, you know? Yeah. But you, you did see a lot of the power of Mausoleum Wanderer and Remorseful Cleric relative yeah. to, uh, you know, things like Rest in Peace or yeah. other um, forms of disruption. That Wanderer was the pressure. most annoying thing. Yeah. yeah. Wanderer just did a lot of damage and still countered something on turn four. Yeah. Remorseful Cleric did a good amount of damage, got rid of those hidden strings. Just the threat of countering something at all costs is just, it's so rough, you know? Yeah. But and, and with the, all the lords, like, you know, it's often a 2-2 two, two and a 3-3. Three, three. If that was yeah. a 1-1, one, one, you, you would have won through it pretty easily, I think. Yep, yep. Yeah, exactly. So I'll be on the play for this for the third game in our first match, testing out uh, the Breach combo deck here. One more thing about that game I wanted to note is I think a lot of people would have been tempted to leave up Queller on turn three, but you got to understand that they're always going to have a turn, maybe two, that they take off to play Lotus Field or take off to copy it with Thespian Stage. Yep. And you need to anticipate those turns and use those turns to be aggressive. 100%. So I played my Lord on turn three, and that's the reason I played Cleric on turn two, because I knew I was going to play Lord on turn three and not hold up Queller. Yep. And that just increased my damage output. Yep. 100%. It's a smart way to look at it. Well... This deck does mulligan quite well, but that is for sure a mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> nice, easy one. A nice, easy one. I um, love it. This hand is solid, so I'm going to keep it. All right. And, Rob, you got any questions? I do. Uh, Dragon Mage <laughs> wants to know, for aggressive blue decks such as, like, is it in Soul? Okay. Uh, do you think that Tormod's Crypt and Ashiok Dream Render are decent options against this deck? Ashiok, you can't search. No, that's not a good one. Um, if you can get it on the play before you find a breach, you can probably steal a game that way. But the one time of exiling your graveyard isn't enough. Um, but uh, once again, aggression mixed with key hate cards like Tormod's Crypt, if you're beating them down, if you're attacking for five on turn two, that could be enough. You know, no, I'm not saying Tormod's Crypt is a good card against this because it's not. But mixed with aggression. Aggression yeah. is the key, but... The the thing is, you, know, you need... With Torrent's Crypt, a card that doesn't do anything besides disrupt them very slightly, yep. you need a lot of aggression with it, and it costs you a full card. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been impressed with effects like that, whereas Remorseful Cleric you saw was Torrent's Crypt, but also dealt you six damage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I needed all of that damage. Literally every <laughs> point of it. Needed it all. Okay, so this one's keepable. Um, now, what we don't want here, I think we just have to get rid of our key combo piece here, even though um, it is definitely usually how we win. We just uh, don't have the luxury of it. So we're going to go land go. I, too, have land go. Oh, could be anything, right? You want to dispute that? I want to dispute that? I do want to, <laughs> but I can't cast it. <laughs> get the field and pass to you. I'll play a spectral city. Okay, okay. Sylvan's Crying was a good top deck. <laughs> I will attack for Oon. The beatdowns, 19. Pass the turn. All right. Hey, that was actually a really good draw, because I didn't really want to play the Breach right now, because I don't want to sacrifice Thespian Sage. Um, this is usually not the land you want to play second, by the yeah. way. If you have any luxury, this is the hand you, or the one you want to play after Lotus Breach. So we are going to start with a strategic planning. That resolves. Okay. One, two, three. All right, so now we got some goods. I think we are going to get this card. Put these in the graveyard, and we're just going to play a temple. Um, do we need that? Probably not. Um, that has been not needed. All right, we're going to put that to the bottom and pass to you. It's good sequencing on those. You definitely want to plan before you temple, because the temple is going to, you know, might be left on top, and then you only see three total cards. Yeah. The planning, you're definitely going to get one of the top three and then see a fresh fourth card. The more you know. <laughs> play a rattle chance. Okay. Anyway, so. Rattle him. Uh, I will play a Supreme Phantom and get in for five. Okay. I am down to 14. Best turn. All right. So definitely going to have a uh, a scary turn, but I mean, Ross has been uh, representing Dispute this entire time, so I definitely have to be wary of that. I think this has just got to be a setup turn for me. I'm not going to die. So I'm going to float two blue. Lotus Field. Yep. Sack these. Copy Lotus Field. Um, I lost my thing, but... Oh, here it is. <laughs> so this is now Lotus Field. I went from uh, having three mana to six. Seems pretty fair. And pass to you. Still think I'm in uh, some trouble. 
Okay. I will uh, shock to 18. Okay. I will attack you for six. You uh, eight. Okay, down to eight. Pass the turn. Untap. Now, likely we just have to go. Um, likely we just have to go. I don't think there's a lot of world where we win if we say go here. Um, so let's go with a... Red. Yep. I'm gonna start with Underworld Breach. Sure. Okay, three blue. We're gonna go down to two blue, zero red. We're gonna attempt to hidden strings, exiling these lands, targeting these. Cards in hand. I have five. That's a lot. Not bad. Once again, we have to be wary of a second hidden strings. I like starting with Breach because it puts them in a weird spot where you like you know you want to let that resolve and counter the spells, but it can just get out of hand, you know? Yeah. Um, maybe I should have gone for it on the Breach. Um, the Coco. I think I should dispute this and just make you have a second string, so although I kind of think you do, because you definitely are playing around the dispute. Yep, I got another string. Yeah. I could have also just disputed this, and then you needed another land or, um, to be able to even play the first strings. Yeah, if you dispute that, I just snap, put it to the bin. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so uh, strings resolves. I won't cipher, believe it or not. <laughs> um, now I'm gonna go six blue. Now I'm pretty dead. <laughs> Go to four blue hidden strings. Yep. Okay. Back to the graveyard with that. I'm gonna go up to 10 blue and down to five. Uh, pour over the pages. Yep. And tap, draw three. Um, discard this. Um. Let's go with three red. Anger. In response, Supreme Phantom. Okay. So at least protect the phantoms. The other two will get exiled. Yep. Um. Okay, I'm going to go with blue. So up to eight blue, down to six blue. Strategic planning. Yep. I'll take this card, graveyard for these. Now I will go down to four blue. Hidden strings. Untap. Um, now I will go for, use this four blue, granted. Yep. I will go get Tome Scour. And now I'm dead. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I knew he didn't have anything. I could have flashback anger as well to clear the board, but here we get to the point where you float six mana, strings to untap, exiling three, Tome Scour four times. 20 cards into the graveyard. You're losing three on each time, so 26, 12, you're netting eight cards, and you only need to take out three, so you're netting five cards with this combo for casting these six cards. So you're netting three cards into the graveyard, but you're staying even on mana. That's the main thing, and then eventually we go, we play this, discard, go get Jace, play Jace, mill. Yeah. So, oh man. It's crazy, I right? Think, I, I, do I just win if I dispute the the breach? 
No, because I had a... Uh, so if you disputed the breach, my hand was this, this, uh, granted. So then I go hidden strings. I'm two mana, go up to eight mana, um, pour over the pages. Up to nine mana. Up to nine. Uh, granted for underworld breach, go. Uh, then you're down at three, and then, yeah, you go from there. Yeah, down um, to five. Breach is down to three mana. Hidden strings goes yeah. infinite. And then I... Fay again. So you, you just yeah. didn't ha if you, you needed two pieces of interaction. Uh, otherwise you were you were dead no matter yeah, what. I only so. had the one. I had a yep. good aggressive draw with one piece of interaction, didn't draw another one. Like dispute plus queller there wins the game yep. very easily. I could have tried to go for a company uh in, in response to the breach, hit either queller or remorseful cleric. I think you would need both. Yeah, yep. yeah, maybe yep. I would and I would have needed both. My yep. uh my or I, wander as well. Yeah, yep. yeah. I would have needed yep. two, two specific hits off the company. Yep. It was just, it actually came down to, like, I valued my clock, so I didn't dispute the turn two strategic planning, or turn three for you. Yep. I instead got the rattle chains down, which was going to let me instant speed the phantoms, which I think is right. And then I I was hoping that I would be able to use it on turn three and go phantom dispute, but you took that turn to get your field down and copy yep. off stage. And I top decked someone's crying, so that was pretty nice. I was going to just strategic planning and stuff, but yeah. Yeah, and if you strategic planning on turn two, you and probably I, snap I probably off. disputed as opposed to playing the sailor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the sailor is, is much easier to get down later, doesn't disrupt the, the your curve as much, whereas the rattle chains was really valuable to get down. Yep. Um, and so you just got the way the, the game sequenced a little bit, I was just a little bit off. I needed two pieces of interaction on a key turn, mm -hmm. only had the one, and then the game ends. It's kind of rough. Well, that is going to do it here for round one with Bant Spirit up against three color Yagamoth's Will. Uh, we are going to see if there's any other decks that can stand up. I personally thought this was kind of the best matchup. Um, and, and we saw a close yeah. match, right? We saw, oh, one yeah. we saw one game where my hand wasn't great and wasn't very disruptive, and yeah. you ran over me. One hand where my hand was very disruptive, and if it weren't for, you know, my, uh, you know, Lack track of sacking of the player. clerk. I would have lost immediately. Yeah, it would have yeah. lo looked very easy on my side. But then I got unlucky to not win mm. from that point once you didn't <laughs> yeah. let me go. I actually got pretty unlucky. There okay. was like eight cards, and I just needed one hidden strength, and the game was over. But mm. yeah. And then in that last game, like, we saw a close game where, like, you being on the play, find it, and, like, one good top deck was enough to put you ahead. Yeah. Um, and I needed two pieces of disruption. So, like, you really do pressure the spirit stack to have good draws. Yeah. You need to mulligan aggressively with this deck on the side. You can't just, like, play your normal game plan of curving spirits and hope that's good enough. Yeah. You need to have the right ones. And I was one short even in that game with a, a good aggressive draw with a dispute. Yep. And I think you said it right, but you didn't have to say spirits. You could have just said you pressure any deck to have a good draw. That's just what this deck does. You pressure them to always have a good draw whether it's mono red aggro having to curve out to you to be able to race you whether it's you know a control deck having the right amount of hate mixed with combo pieces spirits aggressive disruptive you have to have a lot to beat this uh three color ugin ramp deck so stay tuned we're gonna take a short five minute break and then we're gonna be right back with sultai uh delirium as the next competitor against lotus breach we'll see you there